Liz. You're here already. Hi, everybody. It's T with T Quilts, and I just want to do a quick update on the date. It is May 23, 2018, 7 o'clock p.m. USA Standard Time. So I am just going to go ahead and pull this up on my, hopefully on my computer so I can read the comments. We got Liz Ryan here. She's the first one in today. And we also have Diane Rooney. Hi, Diane. Hi, Aries. She says hi to everyone. And then we have Kathy Bays here from Chesapeake, Ohio. I cannot stay long, but I will be here as long as I can and watch the rest later. Thank you for coming, Kathy. I appreciate that. Got Debbie Williams here. So I think I announced last week, I really don't have a specific topic this week. I got a couple of things I want to go over. And that's about it. And then we can just chat. I can answer some questions. Got Teresa Connor here from Tillamook, Oregon. And I'm hoping that I'm reading this correctly. I was laughing at myself last week because I said somebody's name wrong the entire time because I was reading um, from a distance. And yeah. And when I looked at the live viewing, it was hilarious every time I said the person's name wrong. And, you know, it kept showing it as I'm watching it as an uploaded viewing that I could see it. But on my screen, my chat box is pretty small from where I'm sitting. So we have Anitra here signing in from Pennsylvania. Hi, Anitra. Got Al Bates here. Oh, it's Anita from Alabama. Hi, Anita. <laughs> and then got Diane57 here. Hi, Teresa. And so we got Sonia Jones here from Kentucky. And Sarah Raglan says hi to everybody. Hi, Sarah. How are you today? Got June here. I just saw June over on the Facebook site. So welcome, June. And okay. So we got Jennifer here. Hi, Jennifer. We got J.A. Smith here, which is Jody. Hi, Jody. All right. So things are working well. As I was saying, I really don't have a lot to do today because I am getting ready to actually go on retreat. Actually, I am not even ready for a retreat. I was supposed to have a challenge quilt done that was dealing with mythical creatures. I had an idea and I have not even started it and I don't think that I'm going to start it now and drive myself crazy. So this will be the first time in a long time that I haven't done a challenge for the group. And it's just been a lot of things going on in life and then, you know, just normal life things. And then I had a, uh, one of my quilting friends that was also a member of my large quilt guild and a member of my scrap quilting club. She passed away a couple weeks ago, which I didn't mention, but we had her services in the past week. I've received scraps from somebody else that I'm trying to sort through and get out of my space so that I can pass them on to other people. Um, see. Oh, and then I've been contacted about doing another t-shirt quilt. So I've been dealing with that person trying to figure out exactly what they wanted. And so I think we finally got that figured out today. So I'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, also... Good news for me, today is my wedding anniversary, so it's been 20 years today, and we're actually planning a trip later on in the summer, so we're not really doing much today. I thought we were originally going to go out to eat, and I forgot that I told you all that I was having it live tonight, so we'll do it on another night. 
So just a lot going on. And then it's been a couple of days where I just been so overwhelmed with everything that I just decided to sit down and do nothing. So part of me not having a challenge is my fault as well. But that's just how it is. Sometimes you just need to sit down and do nothing just so you can regroup and get your life together. So I see the chat box has been going and going and going. So let me go back and see what's going on here. I think I haven't said Sonia from Kentucky. So hi, Sonia. Welcome. Or if I did, I'd done it again. <laughs> we got Eric here. Hi, Eric. Eric, I do need to email you. I'm not sure if you wanted me to share that information on on T quilts or not. We need to talk about that. And then we got Cheryl Land here. Hi, Cheryl. Got Duana's here. Hi, Duana. Martha Rutherford is here. She says hello, everybody. Hi, Martha. I don't remember your name before. Welcome to the live chat. Got Linda Niles. She says hi, T and everyone. And she was saying she's sorry about my friend. I appreciate all of the condolences because I'm starting to see them come through. And that's why I didn't really announce it a couple weeks ago when it happened because it was just a little too close at that time. I think everybody is doing okay. It's just because we had the services in the past week. So it kind of just like messed up my whole schedule as far as my motivation. So, but I'm doing okay overall. We got um, a lot of people saying happy anniversary. Thank you so much. And <laughs> Kathy says, congratulations on your 20 year anniversary. I would have already killed him by now, <laughs> laughing out loud. <laughs> so yeah. Um, we got Lawrence here from Dallas, Texas. We got Pat. I ain't going to even try your last name, but Pat's here. Glad to be with us tonight. Thank you for joining us, Pat. The Quilty Marine is here. Hi, where have you been? We've been missing you. Okay. So, just a few things that I want to talk about. Uh, I see my phone is go zooming in and out again. Just on the Harley quilt that I may or may not be doing because I haven't actually gotten uh, confirmation with that. I don't say I'm doing anything until I actually get half down. I don't do any uh, for hire work until I give them an estimate of the total cost. And then I also will ask them for half down. And that's because I have to go spend a lot of money on a product just to make their product. And I wanna make sure that I got someone that's seriously interested in getting a product. So whenever you're doing any kind of for hire quilting services, make sure that you get some kind of money down. And I never ask for all the money down because I do want to get paid something at the end. I don't want to have all of my money. I want to feel like I've got a goal to work towards. So at the end, I'll have more money. And most time, if people pay me in cash, if they give me a cash down payment, I don't even spend that money or put it with my money. I just put it aside until I actually get the rest of my money. I'm one of those people that I like to have all of my money all at one time. So... But in, a, in addition to that, I was also an electric quilt today because I first had started out with the standard layouts of your um, t-shirt quilts. I like to start with the cheapest quilt that they can get. And if they're okay with that, then I go ahead and move on with that price or that project. But some people will want a little bit more. They might want frames and sashing. I will do like in my standard, I'll do sashing with no extra charge, but they might want framing and sashing. And then I might add on a little bit more to do that. This customer was really funny because he's a member of a Harley group and he has over 80 shirts from all the different events that he's been to all of his life. And he was about to pitch them and somebody said, I think people are now making quilts with that. 
And so he got my name through someone else in my guild that referred him. And so now he's really interested in quilt. And it was so funny because he doesn't want a standard layout. He actually wants a custom layout. So of course I had to go and make him a custom layout so that I can figure out the price for him. And so we're at that stage now. But I thought I would just share with you what I made in electric quilt so that I can have some idea of how I will start piecing this quilt. This is not going to be the final layout or anything. But this is my plan. And each of these colors represents a particular size. And I didn't put the sizes on this particular one because... I'm not going to give him my whole plan with the measurements for him to take to someone else. But I know what each one of these colors, what size it represents. And what that means is that I can take one or two t-shirts, maybe some different added on piecings that I can add in to make these particular squares be a certain size. So the reason why I'm talking about this <laughs> is because... I want to know if any of you are interested or have t-shirts that you all are wanting to put together into a quilt. And then perhaps maybe I will do the whole process of how I do a t-shirt quilt from start to finish. And then I can also share the layout with you if you all want to do that. So... I'm, you're probably going to be saying it here, but also come back when this video upload if you're really interested and just let me know if you're interested in the actual comment section, not just the chat box, because I won't be seeing all the comments in the chat box unless I watch the video and I don't want to go watch the hour or so video again just to know how many people are interested. So if you are interested, just make a note to come back and say, yes, I'm interested, and then I will do this layout with you from uh, scratch and we'll go through it in a series of steps so let me go and look at the box again and i can't remember where i left off i need to make a piece take a piece of paper and write the last person's <laughs> comment that i read so we got bonita's here and <laughs> a lot of people miss the quilting marine. That's pretty cool. Got Jeannie Kerr is here. Welcome to the live chat, Jeannie. <laughs> and the quilting marine is saying that's right mercenaries get paid up front you know i just have a couple of friends that have done like rack quilts for people or memory quilts for people using clothing from things that they've given them and they still have not come and picked up their quilts and it's been years i do not want to be holding someone's quilt and it's hard to sell a memory quilt because everybody doesn't have that same memory. So I just try to make sure that when I make something that I at least got most of my supplies out of that um, project. And when I say supplies, I'm just saying in general because most of my supplies that I use are on my shelf. So I don't really have to buy anything because I already have the batting. I already have plenty of fabric. So I've just about got something that I can use on every quilt. And then every now and then I may have to go buy a piece of fabric or two for a theme. But yeah, I just try to make sure that I'm not coming out at a loss. <laughs> so we had Kathy that had to leave. Got my brother here again tonight. Hi, how are you, sir? Thank you for watching. <laughs> and Eric say that's the accountant in you talking. I'm one of those people that I don't mind helping people out, but when it's time for me to get paid, I like to have my money. You know, I don't like working for free if I'm working for free. If I'm volunteering, that's to that's something that's totally different. I'm okay with that. But when it's time to be paid, I need to be paid. <laughs> I 
Okay. So, Bonita says, happy anniversary. My deepest sympathy. Yeah, a lot of you all are saying that, and I appreciate that. And I'm just not reading all of those into this video. And the quilting marine, here he goes again. He's a technique junkie just like me. Now it's electric quilt. And actually, thinking about electric quilt, for those that haven't used it in the past, it actually has a more user-friendly interface. It's actually so easy now that it's hard for me to work the easier version because I'm so used to having it so complicated in the other versions. But, yeah, it is really a nice piece of product. And it does cost a lot of money. But the nice thing that I like about Electric Quilt is that when you get ready to go to upgrades, they do give you, like, at least 50% off or more from the original price. So when I did my upgrade, I didn't have to buy the entire product again. So that's pretty cool. And then I can still use all of my old uh, EQ files. They have a different file name. I can upload all of those into the newer version. So they always keep it user-friendly. So I like that as well. So let's see. We got a lot more people in here. My screen is just going and going and going. Okay. So we got, I can't remember if I said Debbie Williams. She's saying hello to Ray. <laughs> That's my brother. <laughs> uh, and then the quilt and marine goes, no, I'm not going to do it. Okay. So we got Patty Spencer is here. We got Nita Hooper is here. Donna Myers. All of them are saying hello. And hello to you ladies as well. So it seems like some of you online are wanting me to do, I see at least two so far. Three, the Quilty Marine saying they're his favorite, so he knows what he's doing. I got three. We got Rosalind Lloyd here from Durham, North Carolina. Yes, interested in t-shirt quilt. We'll leave comment later. Okay, thank you. So I got at least four or five of you in here so far. Hi, Trisha. She says, hey, T and all, good to see you. Welcome, Tricia, to the live viewing. Got So Love, which is Robin from New York, from the Bronx. We got, um, is it Robin or? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I might have said your name wrong, but it doesn't matter because you don't have it there anyway. <laughs> I'm, I'm just blanking out right now and the quilting marine goes how many versions are there and he's talking about i think the electric quilt they only have one version but they're at version number eight at this point so when i started using electric quilt i actually started when they were using version four so when i upgraded to version five i had to i think i they gave me a discount. I upgraded to five. But four and five were not updatable per se. Or maybe they just give you the entire program even when you update. But I know from five through seven, they have all been compatible and all been kind of the same. Version eight is completely different, but it's a, a easier interface to work with. But they only have one version that they sell at a time. You either get the full version or you get the upgrade version. And they do check to make sure that you are somebody that has already purchased their software before they give it to you as well. Let's see. I am lost again in the comments. It keeps uh, scrolling on my screen. Okay, you guys. I'll see this. The Quilting Marine said he is doing the American Beauty. Okay. I guess I missed a comment above about that. Uh... <laughs> Diane is telling me to hold him to that. <laughs> we got Cheryl Starling. She's here from Ontario, 
Canada, hi, welcome to the live chat. And then, um, Pat says, I'm interested. I have some embroidery blocks that she can use. So that's pretty cool. And that's the other thing with the t-shirt quilts you can use. I'm going to be giving you size things to make. And you can use optional quilt blocks. And then you can start adding on other pieces. You can do some crazy blocks or whatever. You can do whatever you want with this. So it doesn't have to be just for a t-shirt quilt. So thanks for pointing that out. A lot of people are still saying that they would love to do the t-shirt quilt. So, okay. We have Joan Elkins here. She says, hi, all We'll watch t-shirt quilt, but it is on my bucket list. I have five in front of that. And Trisha says, I would be interested in a challenge type t-shirt quilt setting. That setting is able to use different size blocks. And Diane Rooney is asking, how much does it cost? I'm assuming she's talking about electric quilt. I'm just going to guess and say it's probably about $200. I'm not sure because I'm not on their site right now. And when I uh, purchased mine, I think I may have gotten it for a half off of whatever the regular price is. But they still have the regular full version price as well as the upgrade price there. So you should be able to see it. And who sells it? It's actually Electric Quilt is sold by the Electric Quilt Company. So you can just Google the Electric Quilt Company and it will take you to their site. And then they want to know, does 8 work with Windows 10? Of course it does because it, it's new and it just came out. And that's the reason why you might want to upgrade software that you use on a regular basis is because most times they will eventually start having kinks in them as the new versions of things are created, like your software operating systems. So yes, it does work. And 7 was working very well before with all the other versions. So I've had seven, seven has been out for years. And that's the other thing, they don't create an upgrade every other year. I probably had version seven for over five years. And now they just came out with eight. So I do like that about them as well. And then sometimes they'll just have an upgrade to the version. And so it might be instead of 8.0, it might end up being version 8.1. And they'll give you those updates for free. We got Susan Glenn here from Cincinnati. Welcome, Susan, to the live chats. And Diane says she has embroidery blocks, but they are all the same size. You can still use those embroidery blocks if you want to incorporate them and do, do it with this T-shirt layout quilt instead. You just will be adding more pieces to it, or you might be combining, say you've got some extra quilt blocks that you are not using, or you've got some extra half square triangles, things like that. You can use some of your crumb piecing. So you can use whatever blocks you want, as long as they're not bigger than the sizes that I'm going to tell you. And in this quilt that I'm doing, it's requested for queen size bed. So keep that in mind as well. This is going to be a 96 inch square quilt is what was requested. So this is a large quilt. You may need to make some ad uh, adapt adaptations to the size if you want to, or you can go ahead and make this size with me. So let's see. Have Lucy Rivera, Rivera, Rivera is here. Hi T, love you from Boston, Mass. Welcome, Lucy. Lucy is my mom's name, her first name. So welcome to the chat. And so love says, I'm still trying to teach myself how to use it. That's funny. 
<laughs> when you first get in, you kind of like blank out because you're trying to figure out what is it that I need to do. It seems like there is nothing telling you what to do, but it's so simple that it's just sitting there and you've just got to click on something, but you don't know what that something is. And that's what's so weird about version eight. I'm so used to it being super complex, but it is it is just sitting right there, but you've got to click on it. And every time I go in, because it's not one of those programs I'm in every day, I might go in twice a month. But, you know, you've got to remember all the stuff all over again. But it is so much easier to make a custom quilt in EQ8 than it is in any other version that I've ever had. And that's mostly what I use it for is custom quilt settings. Oh, Benita is asking me, were you able to check if your PSW works with the upgraded version for the XL1000? Completely forgot. Um, Bonita, you know my email address. Sometimes I forget stuff and then I go back through and I try to listen to the live thing after it uploads and then I still might miss something because I might be futzing around in my work area. So email me that and then I'll make sure that I get it done because I have to pull that out. I have not used PSW in so long that I've got to like pull it out of the back parts of my storage area. So let me know and I will do that for you. And sorry that I forgot it. Joan says Amazon has it for $169. I'm assuming that's EQ8. <laughs> the Quilting Marine is saying PSW. What's that? <laughs> that's actually, there's a Singer Quantrum XL1000 sewing machine. The software for digitizing embroidery is called PSW. So that's what we're referring to. And it's an old system that's not being sold. I have the machine and I don't even use the embroidery portion of it anymore because my two machines at my desk have embroidery. So that's what that is. And I do... Um, when I'm doing machine embroidery and I have like in the hoop projects, I do use both of my machines at the same time because say if I'm making some sort of a, a bag or a thing where you have to put two pieces together, I'll do one part on one machine and then do the other part on the second machine. So I have kind of like a little sweatshop going. So if you do have the option of having two embroidery machines, that would be great. All right. Quilting Marie says, back to my crayons. <laughs> okay. The other thing is, and I'm missing one. I have received a couple of the Benertex, um packets. And I have the winter one. Well, mine's expiring the winter. Let me see which one do I have here. I'm trying to see which pack is this. Spring 2018, but there was one that came out before this, and I have not done it either. So I have two packs here that I haven't done anything with, and I do still like Benetex. I like receiving it. I have already opened it, and I kind of already looked at my little newsletter that's included, but I haven't had chance to do videos. I am just getting caught up on some videos and still got others that I need to edit. So I have not done anything. The other reason why I haven't made it a priority is because I just feel like I've contacted Benetex and I feel like they should give me one person that can get a packet for free or something like that. Maybe it's just me. You know, I'm advertising for them. I am giving them new people that are signing up. And so I just asked for one packet that I could possibly give to my subscribers as a door prize or a comment prize. And I haven't heard anything back from them. So it's not that I don't like them still because they don't have to give me anything. I do recognize that, but then I don't have to upload either. So that's what's going on with the Benetex. It was actually mentioned to me in a letter that I received. And I will read that letter into a video for my mail call that's coming up probably tomorrow because Friday I'm going to be traveling. So it might be up a day early. I got to edit the video. And she was saying that she also told Benetex that she 
got that she signed up because of me as well. And I've had other people contacting me uh, wanting to do affiliations with me. Some people I do do the affiliates and some of them I refuse because they're not my target audience or not something that I believe in or anyone in my family would believe in because if it's something that I don't use then I'll see if somebody else in my family would use it and they can give me the review. But if it's something that I just don't agree with, the topic is not something that I want to promote, then I don't promote those things. So, yes, that's what's going on with the Benertex package. It's, oh, I meant to show you the fabrics, though. Um, it's called Picnic Time. I think that's what it's called. <laughs> Let's see. Nope. It's called Front Porch. And the quilt pattern on the back is called Picnic Time. So this is the actual pattern that they are suggesting. And I actually like this pattern. I would probably do that. That's using the charms. And they are more of your spring colors they're not the dark jewel tones for the most part they're really pretty fabrics and so i'll just show you a few of them here it's kind of hard to do this up in the air let's see <laughs> get this board right here so so just some of them I'm not going to go through all of them. Got a lot of glasses, flip-flops, that kind of stuff. Summer fruits. And we even got some bees in here. So, stripes and flowers. And then let's see what's in the other pack. Because what they do is they'll make the same print and then they will just put it in other colors. So I see some orange flowers. We just saw those. And the only other thing that's in here is different colors of honeycomb prints. So I'll just put two of them up there. So that's it. So I just haven't... um had time to or haven't made time to do these because I'm working on other projects that I am so far behind on and pretty soon it'll be time to do the next block of the month that I've got to get done so and just FYI if we decide to do the or I guess we are going to do the t-shirt quilt layout where you can put whatever you want in it and then but I probably won't start that till July. I'm supposed to meet with him in June. If I don't meet with him in June, I'm just going to do it in July. And I'll do one of my own t-shirt quilts. So we will have it either way. That's why I brought it up. So get your supplies ready. And it will not be a supply list because we're just using whatever we have in our stash as we go. If you don't have a scrap stash, then just go out and buy... I'm just going to guess and say 10 to 15 different fat quarters, and then you can cut from those. That should work for you as well. But I am going to be using all scraps and stash fabrics for the most part. All right. So let me go back through the comment section here. <laughs> You guys are funny in this comment section. <laughs> uh, Jennifer, I don't know. You said that's brilliant. Scribbles notes to self. I don't know if it's something I said or if it's something in the comment section. June says all of that is over my head. I don't know if she's talking about the t-shirt quilt thing is over her head. Oh. 
<laughs> oh, the embroidery machines. That's where we were. Okay. So they're talking about the embroidery machines where she says she scribble notes. Yeah, but I, I love multitasking. And yeah, I do use my... Whenever I'm embroidering, I make both machines work. So uh, Diane is saying... And then the Quilton Marine said, what better way to get free advertising, right? Yes, you're correct. And then we got Diane57 saying, what is Benartex? Benartex is a fabric manufacturing. And I'm sure somebody is telling you, there's Eric. And they have been in the business for a long term they, time. They actually sell my favorite fabric line, which is Fossil Ferns. And I have a stash of those that I'm not even using right now. So, um, yeah, that's who Benartex is. And some people in the comment section also told you as well. So I appreciate you all helping her out. That's what I love about my chat room. Okay. Um... Lippe vlogging 500 cents. Hello to my friend from Tokyo, Conavera. I have no idea what that is. <laughs> I think it's just someone in the wrong chat room. Okay, and Jennifer is saying that she would use the two embroidery machines for hoop projects. I think I mentioned it, but I just want to make sure I restate it. <laughs> and Trisha agrees with me that it's a troll. Yes, it is. Yes. So I don't have anything else to discuss other than my brain is just wrapped around what am I actually doing on retreat if I'm not set up for projects or challenges or anything like that. So, But I did make soup for the retreat. I actually made it yesterday and I put it in the freezer so that when I take it to retreat, I don't have to worry about having it in a cooler. I'm When we go on this retreat with my small group, we go every Memorial uh, weekend, every year. But part of that is we have to provide a meal. And I have to provide Friday night's meal this year. So I made chicken ch corn chowder soup. And then I'm going to bake some chicken tomorrow. And I'll have broccoli, and I haven't figured out dessert and drink yet. It probably would be something like pink lemonade, and probably that'll be it. I have to figure out something for dessert. I normally make a pound cake with caramel icing, but I don't know if I'm going to have time for that since I'm not packed yet. But that's what's on my agenda. I always like to keep you up to date on what I'm doing, so... If anybody got any questions, especially my new quilters, you got any questions that you are experiencing in your current quilting situation, you can post them in the box. And if I can, I will most definitely do that. And he, uh, the Quilting Marine is saying, wow, I should make my famous potato soup. I actually make potato soup too. I like that one. I My favorite soups that I make I make um, I'd make chicken and rice, of course. Then I've got the potato soup, corn chowder, and then I have one more. I don't know what it's called because it's kind of a... Um, you can use turkey or chicken. I mostly do it when I have turkey. It's like a turkey vegetable soup, but it's in a red sauce, which is different. So it's kind of like a chicken vegetable soup or turkey vegetable soup but it's also in a tomato based sauce which is really good and don't even talk about fried rice i made fried rice yesterday too i see you guys shrimp fried rice i made fried rice yesterday with part of the chicken that i had and i put for those that don't like pork i did put bacon in it but i also put like eggs I put bell peppers in, the red, orange, and yellow, 
regular onions, eggs, and I also added broccoli for me. My husband does like broccoli, so I don't mix it in when I'm making the rice. But it had all kind of vegetables in it as well. But it was really good too. So let me go back and make sure I'm not missing anybody's comments. Because my machine just rolls. <laughs> so if I miss your comments, I always just repost them again. The EQ is over my head. I have, an, I have an embroidery with my Rose Viking machine. And that's pretty cool. I know some people that love their Rose Viking machine. <laughs> Diane 57 says she needs an embroidery machine. A quilt and marine why I should make my so I got that one. I'm trying to go back through the comments to make sure I'm not missing anybody's comments. <laughs> and Pat says, laughing out loud, you got food together and not a project. Yeah, I better have that food together. Those ladies will beat me up. <laughs> Every year we switch which meal we have. And my meals, I had lunch on Saturday one year, and then I had lunch, dinner on Saturday one year. So I'm so glad that I have a Friday meal because once I do my meal on Friday night, then I can put all of that stuff up, and then I don't have to worry about food anymore. So I just get it over with fast. Um, Diane is saying, um, hold on, let me get to, let me get down there first. That was Pat, the last person. Okay. And Trisha's saying, hope you all have a wonderful retreat. We will. It's just, <laughs> I won't be participating, so I definitely won't win, win any ribbons. <laughs> and then I also have to do um, entertainment. So I'm just going to take, like, some paper games, like... Um, crossword puzzles and things like that that are quilt related diane is asking where is retreat we're actually going into troy illinois so we're going to go there it's only it's not that far from my house this time if i miss something i could even come home and get it it's that close so it's not too far and michelle thompson says that our group will be in Shipshewana in June on retreat. I know that used to be the retreats they called Dear Jane, but they no longer call it the Dear Jane Quilt uh, retreat. And one year I do plan to go to that because I do want to go to Shipshewana. And I'm like, what other time to go than when they're having a retreat there? So one of those retreats I'm actually am going to show up at. I just haven't figured out which one. And it's not soon. It won't be this year, that's for sure. And I'm telling you, I'm having such a difficult time with my mouse. And Eric says, no cornbread. <laughs> I do have the fixings for cornbread, and I thought about it. I actually bought some crackers as a backup just in case I didn't get to making the cornbread. But I bet you that they would rather have the pound cake than that cornbread. So if I had to bake anything, it would be the cake. So that's why I uh, purchased crackers just in case. And Diane saying she should make her famous potato salad. Ooh, that sounds good. And Susan Glenn says she makes a wicked buffalo chicken. Yummy. <laughs> okay, you all got all of these things that you make good. We need to plan a retreat and plan it around the St. Louis area instead of the Missouri Star area, I'm thinking. Or even going to the place that we go to in Troy, Illinois might be a good place for us. We might need to do another retreat, but you all need to sign up. And thinking of retreat, I still have one opening left for the Missouri Star quilt retreat that's scheduled in September. So... I have seven people and we need a total of eight. We got so love saying, I want to try potato soup. 
Do you want to try to make potato soup or eat potato soup? <laughs> There's a difference. <laughs> the quilting marine goes, ooh, look out the window. I'm pulling up. <laughs> and Diane says, it's too hot for chili. Yeah, we're talking about all this food. I think everybody in here is going to get hungry. <laughs> the quilting marine says, I like your husband's a fellow broccoli hater. He hardly eats any vegetables. It's sad. Let's see. And Diane, I think I see you posted again, and I did answer your question by now, but I'm glad you did. And anybody that feels like I skipped your question about what's going on in the chat box, just repost it. I appreciate that. And then on Tuesdays, I have a small quilting group. I made potato salad. That was June. Eric says, entertainment and line dancing. <laughs> sure, why not? <laughs> Let's have some fun. Do you blank a retreat around the holidays? Do you host a retreat around the holidays, Thanksgiving, Christmas? No, not really. Um, I don't really host any retreats per se, other than us doing our small group, because it's only five of us in that group. And then we have three guests that we have come with us. So it's eight of us that go to this retreat place in do Memorial Day holiday weekend um the thing with scheduling i scheduled this retreat for missouri star and i had a lot of people saying that they were going to do it and so i started going to a place where they could hold 30 or more quilters because that's where you really get the great discount price but i didn't get those people to sign up so i i am not going that route again because it's very costly for me to do that Plus, it's not in my area, so I don't really know the Missouri Star, the Hampton, the Hamilton, Kansas City Star, that Kansas City, Missouri area. I know St. Louis area, and so if you're with somebody for, we're doing a five-day retreat, I really don't know what there is to sightsee. I don't know any of those things, so I don't really know where their quilt shops are, so I'm locating all of that. Other than Missouri Star, I know where their quilt shops are, but I don't know where the other surrounding quilt shops are, and I do want to make sure that I take people to more than just Missouri Star. So... If I do host any other retreat, it will not be a Missouri Star quilt retreat, unfortunately. It will have to be something that's located closer to my area where I know everything that we can do in my area. And then we have a lot of well-known things that you can optionally do if you want to during the daytime. And you can come back and quilt in the evenings. And a lot of the things in St. Louis are free. So we have a very nice zoo. We have very nice history art museums. Uh, we have... Things that you can, in the summertime, we have uh, the jewel box that have fun on the lawn. So we have various different things that go on here that I know about that I don't know about on that side of my state. So the next one will be more local here if I do anything. So I'm going back into the comments. <laughs> Doris Dale says she would rather have the cornbread. You haven't tasted my pound cake with caramel icing. <laughs> the ladies already have asked me, was I going to make it? And I said, I didn't know. They asked me last Thursday and I go, I have no idea. <laughs> Got Diane saying, plan to retreat close to Texas. That's not going to work, but I do plan to go to Houston this year. So I will be in Houston at the Quilt Show in November of this year. If anybody from Texas or anywhere else around the USA or around the world, because <laughs> Houston <laughs> collects them all, just stop me and let me know you see me. Uh, Donna Maya says, how far is Troy, Missouri? 
from your airport? Um, I'd say like maybe 40, maybe 50 minutes, something like that to the airport. I have a couple of friends that live in Troy, Missouri, from my house in North County of St. Louis to Troy is about 45 minutes. So I'd say you can get to the airport 35, 40 minutes, maybe, maybe. Diane says, I live way down on the Gulf Coast. <laughs> The Kulti Marine is still having flashbacks. He's saying that vegetables are for rabbits. <laughs> Bonita says, you have time to sightsee at retreat? It depends, because if you're at a five-day retreat, maybe you might want to go out and do something, or maybe you might want to taste some of the local food. We're, um, we got a couple of places we're, we're well known for um, Italian food in the south side of St. Louis. It's like none other. I've gone to other places and even some of your like Olive Garden type deals, that's not Italian food. So it just depends. So you don't really have to, but I like to give people choices. Sometimes when people come to a different state, they don't want to, they want to see a couple of things before they go home. Yes, we're there for a retreat, but they also want to see a couple of things as well. It just depends, and that's optional. When I was in KC, I found a couple of cool places. I can email some things I did there, if you like. Sure, Eric, that would be great. <laughs> Eric is shouting Houston. <laughs> um, so Love says she did her basic training in St. Louis. So Diane, she's going. So great, Diane. I'll see you in uh, Houston. That's pretty cool. And Pat is in Houston, so she's there. So she says she's looking forward to seeing us. Diane 57 will be at the cool show too. What day, T? Um, probably the Thursday through Saturday will probably be there. I'm sure I'll be at the show at some points during those days, just not sure where. Maybe if we get enough people that want to meet in a particular area at a particular time, we can do that. We can schedule that a little later. Tracy is saying she's moving, wants, she's going to move back and want to attend the quilt show in Houston. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> My brother is saying he'll have some of that cake. <laughs> See, he knows what the cake tastes like. Hi, Diana. She's back. She's a, Diana is a member of my Scrap Quilting Club. We're just talking, Diana. We don't have any agenda today. I've already discussed a few things. And Donna Meyer says, excellent Italian food in, in St. Louis. I lived in South County for over six years, and that is the best part of town to get it from you don't go to the italian places on the other sides of town you always want to go on the south side and get your italian food and and you can pick a place but my favorite is canetto's i love canetto's So we got three people already for meeting up. Is that what's going on in the comments section? Because my screen is rolling again. <laughs> I think Tracy is talking to some of the other people in here about Texas.
And Diane says either steak, barbecue, or Mexican. I think that's what she's saying is great in Texas. And Donna is saying for a meetup. So when we get closer to Houston and then most people will know that they are going to attend or not by that time, let's say we'll start talking about this maybe middle of October and then we can set up a spot at the show where we can meet, be it in the cafeteria, the food section might be best. And then we can just go from there. <laughs> now, Eric is funny. He's asking my brother on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the best, how good is that pound cake? <laughs> so if you're still here, Ray, you answer his question. So Cheryl says, Houston is nice because it's sort of mid-country if people can't fly completely across the country. And so other people are still talking about us meeting up. So we'll see if my brother comes back and comment about that pound cake, if he's still here. Because I don't know if he actually reads the comments. But yes, so again, as far as meeting up in Houston, we'll just discuss that in the middle of October. We'll start talking about that again because I want to make sure that Everybody know whether or not they can meet up and then about how many people we're going to actually have there. <laughs> Eric, my brother says it's a 10 and then Cheryl's laughing. <laughs> I'm telling you, every time I go to a family event, I, I make so many other things, but I got to bring the pound cake too. I can't just bring something else because I want to bring something else. I, I either bring the pound cake so I don't have to bring another dish or I have to bring two dish dishes if I go. But it's so funny. And my grandmother used to make the caramel icing and it kind of got lost in our family when she stopped making it. And so I've gotten back into making it. And my caramel is from scratch. It's not boiling a can of pet milk making caramel. I don't like that kind of caramel. But I do make everything from scratch. <laughs> now Eric is saying bring some to Houston. <laughs> hey Eric, do you bring sewing machines when you're um going to Houston or do you just walk around and get the entertainment that's going on in Houston while you're there for the quilt show? <laughs> Sarah says Eric wants to eat. <laughs> And Donna, don't I didn't threaten my brother. He's my brother can't be threatened. You don't know my brother. <laughs> he will tell you exactly what's on his mind. <sighs> Donna says she loves caramel icing. Me too. I could just eat the icing because it's kind of like candy by itself. You don't even need the cake. Uh, Bonita is asking, what's the name of the quilt show in Houston? Um, I can't remember right now. Can somebody give her the name of the actual show in Houston? I just call it the Houston Quilt Show. <laughs> I know that's not right, but that's what I do. <laughs> okay. Okay, Eric, I saw your response to my answer. You say, no, I usually rent the machine if it's available. Too expensive to carry it on the plane. International Quilt Festival, that's correct. I don't know why I was blanking that, but I, but I did. Thank you, Pat, for helping us out. Yeah, and, well, Eric made a good point. He says, it's International Quilt Festival. Don't get it confused with International Quilt Market. That's normally the week before uh, the Quilt Festival. Quilt Market is a week before Quilt Festival, and that's where the shop owners are in. So you don't want to go to Houston during the wrong week. Make sure you're there at the right time. <laughs> and my brother is still justifying. He's saying, that's for real. 
<laughs> I told you he has his own. He will tell you his honest opinion if you're asking. Sometimes you may not want to ask him because he can be brutally honest. Yeah, so, yeah, so I don't have any other questions. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I need to share. And my brain is kind of like in lackadaisy mode because I just got a lot going on in my head, so. <laughs> Eric says, okay, Ray, I believe you. See, if I'm uh, traveling and flying, by the time I get everything else, I don't know if I'm going to have room for cake, but we'll see. We'll see when it gets closer. So I won't make any actual promises, but I'll just say I'll try. We'll see. Just depends on what all I got to bring and how much cake. Because I can't bring just you a slice of cake. <laughs> and there are other people... <laughs> when we meet up <laughs> Eric talking about we always make room for cake <laughs> and Eric's going oh no what's that ice cream so he <laughs> he's already at the store getting the ice cream <laughs> okay we'll see okay I'm just trying to go back through the um uh, comments see if i missed anything got the quote to marine says which houston show is the one you can test drive long arms you can most definitely test drive long arms at international quilt festival because you're gonna have just about all of your major long arm people there because they want to sell those machines so i'm sure you can test drive there my only uh, issue with Houston is that because the entry or the, not the entry, the um, vendor fees are so expensive that some of your smaller companies can't afford to vend at Houston. So you won't get a lot of your smaller companies, but you should have your major manufacturers like Nolting, Gamble, Handy Quilter, Tin Lizzy. AQS, those type, APQS, those people should be there for sure. <laughs> Eric, you're funny. <laughs> we can each bring an ingredient and bake it at a local followers kitchen laughing out loud <laughs> we're gonna actually have a kitchen so we could be baked there so that is and that's a suggestion too and by the time we're there we'll probably have some food anyway And then Cheryl was saying that it's unfortunate that it's so expensive for small vendors. You know, I've been learning a lot about the vending process since I've been more recently really connecting with my friend that's with Iowa Star Quilts. And so I've never really had an in into vending and she was trying to get me to vend. And I don't feel that I have the clientele to vend at this time. So I just help her and I sit in her booth. I don't mind because I'm most, most of the time I'm going to the quilt show anyway, so I really don't mind going to help her. But as far as vending, you know, if you are not pulling in a certain amount of money, then you're just at a loss before you even get set up. And then you're not even looking at the amount of time it takes for you to set up, your travel costs to get there, your hotel fees, and all that other stuff. So vending can be very expensive. And if you're a small company just starting out, it's very difficult for you to vend in some areas. I think um, IQF, International Quilt Festival in Chicago or the Rosemont area was reasonable for their fees.
And then Quilter Marin said, man, I need to ma make it to this Houston show. And he's saying that it's not fair to small companies. No, but, you know, I, I don't, they got such a high demand that I guess the higher your demand is for something, the more you can increase your cost on that. And now I'm back into talking accounting and numbers. But that's why they can do it. If no one was buying those spots, then they would have to lower those prices. So as long as people are willing to pay a particular price, that price will always increase. And Diane is saying that Baby Lock, Janome, Brother, all the main brands of sewing machines too, even if I didn't mention them. Are you serious about getting a long arm? Test driving at the quilt shows is best. Houston always has the major long arm companies and wants for you to test drive. And Diane says, I didn't realize it was so, ex so expensive. And that's why, you know, they really want you to buy something from them if you, when you're in their booth or if you like something. And so I can kind of understand that from a seller's point of view, but you can't buy something in every booth. And in Houston, it is so many booths. It's just ridiculous. It seems like the aisles are never ending. So you always got some place where you can spend your money and money, unfortunately, is not unlimited. So I can understand The Quilty Marine says he just wants to test drive. He says the prices are out of control for him. And you know, some of the other things that you can do if you, once you test drive, you can also, there are websites and Facebook groups that have long arms that are used. And I know for a fact, I don't know about other companies, but I do know that Gamma machines will hold up over a period of time. So even buying that used, because they're just main parts. And so even a used one is good. People are still buying the Gamel Classic, the very first machine that came out. And people are still talking about how good it is. The problem with that is that it came out when there was a stitch regulation. And I don't think it has a command for you to lock the uh, feet, the shaft. So if you want to just stitch a straight line down, that you can stitch the straight line down. So there's like certain features that it's missing. But overall, the quality of the machine is still like day one. So that's the nice thing about just making sure you get a reputable machine. And I'm not saying Gamble is the only reputable machine. There's a lot of reputable machines. But yeah, you can get a used one for a lot cheaper. And Diane is saying that she saved all year to go to Houston. Well, I save and then i've been to too many quilt shows this year so i don't know i guess i need to start back up and then also planning a trip with my hubby coming up so yeah i got a lot of things i saved up for and then it's like i don't know where i want to spend my money so <laughs> i'm just kind of looking at my money Yeah, somebody was saying that Houston has hundreds of booths. And the Quilting Marine is saying he's not scared of used, and that's good too. And if you like tinkering with stuff, you know, they are very easy to repair because they're very simplistic. They're not all of computer workings like it is in a sewing machine because it's very basic. And then the computerized part's a whole nother different section of that that has nothing to do with the actual machine. So... If you're not scared of tinkering with something, and I've had to tinker with my long arm a little, and then I've gone and got my husband because sometimes they might have stuff, bolts on that are factory drilled on that I don't have the power or strength to take off. So I go get my husband and he takes it off for me. So I like that as well. My husband is a machinist. While he don't like working on my sewing machines, he will you know, take the stuff apart from me. He's good for that. And then I figure out what it is I want to do once I get in there because he doesn't want to be responsible for damaging anything. He's pretty funny. And then you got Lauren King. So I think the Missouri Star Quilting 
was in Houston last year. I think they have been at all of the major shows in the past year. And then I saw Connecting Threads this time for the first time at IQF and in Paducah. So maybe they're starting to start traveling more to get more business as well. Eric says, besides the booths, the quilts are mind-boggling gorgeous. And that's true as well. It's And it's a gazillion of those as well. So Houston is just so big that it just take you... I think my first day, I just walk up and down every aisle just to know where things are situated, like where the vendors are. I'm not really going into any of the booths. I just walk up and down every aisle because it's so many of them there. And then I start to hone in on what I'm looking for on my second or third day there or something because Houston is just ridiculous. You've never been to like a Paducah AQS quilt show, you're going to be really mind blown if you've never been to one of the smaller shows. Houston is just, ugh, it's large. <laughs> Terry says, if you buy at a show, who do you call for service? Now, this is a, a problem with certain things when you buy at a show. I don't know how all of the other companies do it, but I'm going to give you two experiences that I know of for sure. One with a sewing machine, a baby lock, and then one from the long arm for Gamel. For Gamel, if you go to a show and you purchase a machine, that machine is cost back to your store that's closest to you. It could be that that store is four hours away, six hours away, but it would be the store that's geographically closest to your address. That's how they do it. So the store that's there that's representing Gamble or not the people that are actually taking your money in the end. And so therefore you are getting your service local. That's one thing that I did like about Gamble. Now, because I didn't purchase from the other ones, I did not go into that more specifically. I have two friends here that have 10 Lizzie's, and neither one of them know who is the 10 Lizzie representative in our area. We had a store that used to sell 10 Lizzie's, and they stopped selling 10 Lizzie's, and after that, we don't know where to take the 10 Lizzie sewing machines to in this area. One of my friends at a quilt show, I was with her, she purchased... A baby lock at the at the time she bought the Elisimo Gold, which was the top of the line for the baby lock sewing machines. We were in Paducah, Kentucky, I want to say. And she mentioned to the people about you know getting service and classes and all of that kind of stuff. And they told her that they would set her up with one of the local people to give her the classes. She would have she bought the gold maintenance plan or whatever it's called that went with that so she had like three or four years where everything was covered on the machine if something goes wrong she had a problem needed some service so she goes and takes the machine to the place that was closest to her home that sold baby lock machines and they did not want to service that machine because she did not buy it from them. They did not receive the profit for that. So therefore, they did not want to service the machine. They did not want to give her any classes on that machine. So you do have to be, I think, more careful with buying sewing machines. And remember that Elisimo, when it was top of the line, that machine was about six or $7,000 when it was at the top of the line at that particular time. She spent that kind of money and could not get any service, nor could she get any classes. She never got any classes. The only thing that was going for her was that Tacconi, who was the company that owned Baby Lock, is located here in the St. Louis area. So she called Tacconi, and the Tacconi office actually fixed her machine. Tacconi could not get the shop to fix her machine. This was a sewing machine shop store. They had the, the shop to repair the machines inside the store, and they wouldn't re repair her machine. Tacconi had to fix her machine. They also had her machine for a couple of months because they were trying to make sure that they sold various different things on it to make sure that it would 
replicate the problem that she was having. They did give her another machine that she could sew on in the interim. So she wasn't without a machine. But I just feel like you need to be careful because these people will tell you what you want to hear at a show. And then you may not get that service in the long run. So you just need to be careful. So if you're really considering buying something brand new, I would recommend going to your local store to purchase just to make sure. Now, like I said, Gamel, Gamel is the one that I do know 100% will bump that back to the person that's closest to you. So just be aware of what you're doing when you're at these quilt um, shows and you're buying main ticket items. Some things it doesn't matter, but there are a lot of things that it does matter. Okay, I'm through pe I'm through preaching. <laughs> okay, here we go with uh Donna says I have stitch control with horizontal and vertical locks, and that's what I have too. I have I couldn't remember what the locks were called. So I have that on my gamma as well. And I use those to make sure that I put my quilt tops on straight and that they are loading straight. So I, that is very important for me. Debbie says... <laughs> QM, you better talk to your chief financial officer. <laughs> just got to be careful with your money you know money is hard to come by and you don't want to buy something and then not get the services you were expecting hold on let me go back up here because i think my machine rolled again okay <laughs> and the quilty marine mark saying he has to leave his wife at the man cave while he hit the boots she's not going for that she know you spending the money there's a huge mall not too far from the venue she can go there <laughs> that's eric helping out I can't believe that there isn't a quilt show in New York City. That is strange. And then Eric is saying that Connecting Threads was also at Road to California this year. So I don't know what happened with Connecting Threads, but they came out and they came out strong this year. They have been just going everywhere. And Eric is saying he's got to make it to Paducah one year. Jordan Fabrics, PM Quilting, and Sparrow Quilting were there. Oh, Jordan Fabrics was there? And Diane is saying that Janome are good like that as well. I guess she's with, uh, when I was talking about the machines, and that they will service give you service on it. Terry is saying excellent information. Thank you so much, T. And we got Tracy who has never been to a quilt show. I'm a beginner and would love to see what's at the show. Tracy, I got a lot of videos on quilt shows. And just so you can see the magnitude, you're not even seeing it all in my videos. But you at least need to just watch and see how many quilts I'm showing you. Because I don't even show you a lot of the vendors because a lot of them don't like for you to take photos of their items that they're selling. So I try not to show too many booths. But if you just look at the number of quilts, that quilt's going to be in conjunction with the number of booths that are there. Because the show size and the vendor almost kind of hand, they go hand in hand with each other. So the more quilts are there, most likely the more vendors. Um... And then Eric is saying, good point. Also know that some stores send out their machines for service and don't do it in-house. And I don't like to take my machine to a place where they're going to send it to somewhere else. And the reason being is because when I pack up my machine to take it somewhere, I know that I'm protecting my machine. 
I don't know how these they would travel and take my machine somewhere else. I want to make sure that it doesn't get bumped unnecessarily, fall over, that kind of thing. And you're more likely to take care of your stuff better than anybody else. And so I just like to take mine to a place that does it. And then that way, I know it made it there safe, that it doesn't have any issues other than what I'm bringing it in for, be it a cleaning or being it some adjustments. So good point, Eric. And we got, you can probably, from Diane said, you can probably be able to get the same price from your local dealer. And they will, most of your local dealers will accept a price that's being promoted at a show. And matter of fact, the shop that wouldn't take, wouldn't do the service on my friend's machine, they send out emails before any major show and tell all their customers, just in case they're going to buy a machine, that they will be any price that they get on the road. And they'll even beat any online price. So they're real good about that, but they wouldn't work on that machine. <laughs> And Donna's letting everybody know she has the Gamel uh, 18, Division 18 Gamel. Uh, thumbs up, everybody. The Quilty Marine is reminding everybody. I have no idea. We're at 820. I've just been going through the comments section. Hadn't been paying attention to time. So if you're signing out, don't forget to thumbs up the video, please. I'd appreciate that. Some of you are saying you already did. And... um. Diane is telling Tracy that if you do go to a quilt show, you need to go for two days, one day for viewing and then another day for shopping. And I recommend that, although I've been going to Paducah so many times now that I've got Paducah down pack, I can do Paducah in one day. I think I went twice where I stayed overnight in Paducah, like stayed one night so I could have two days. But most of the time I do Paducah in one day. Um, somebody is asking, what camera do I use when I'm at the show? I don't have it in here. I just took it out. Um, I have a Canon GX7, and I think they have a second version of that camera now, but I got the original Canon GX7, and I love it. <laughs> And the funny thing is, I don't have, like, one of the big lens. I don't have a super fancy camera, although the Canon GX7 is pricey. I, I bought it because of some of the features that it had that I like to use. So that's why I bought it. But it's not one of those big cameras that have all the lenses you have to put on and off. It doesn't look ginormous like some other people's camera, but I get such great picture quality out of it. That's why I actually like that camera. So, but I do need to at some point upgrade and get a more professional. This, I guess, this is more of a blogging camera, is what they advertise it as, probably. But I probably need to get more of a professional level camera at some point. Yeah, that's more money. See, I'm always looking at my money and it's like, oh no, I can't spend that. <laughs> so it just depends. I'll have to see. We'll plan a trip to Quilt Show next year, I hope. That's so love. I just have been to a local quilt show, and they are awesome. Yes, even your, even if you can't go to a major quilt show, at least go to some of your local quilt shows. Matter of fact, support your local quilt shows. I think if you don't support them, they can't continue to do that. I know for my guild, we do not make a whole lot of money off of our quilt show. We do have good attendance. But we use that money. We have to rent a place. We rent the building. We have certain other things that are going on. We might give you something for free. In addition to that, the Quilt Guild uses anything that's left over. They might hire a national speaker to come in. So that then benefits that guild where they might have a national speaker in. And whether you know it or not, whether you are a member of a guild or not, you can attend the meeting as a guest. 
They may have you pay 10 or $15 to hear that guest speaker, but you can still go to that meeting and, and see that guest speaker. So please support your local guild quilt shows if they have any. That's why I go to all of the ones that are around here because if they don't have attendance, they can't continue to function and give the quilting people what they want. So please do that. We got Dewana says, I don't have room for a quilting machine. Dewana, I didn't have room for a quilting machine either, but I made some room. My husband said, go for it. And I was like, okay. And he, he hasn't ever come back and reneged on that either. So that's a blessing too. Because sometimes you'll get permission to do something and then you, re you they realize that it was a pain that they are dealing with. And so he has never come back in the three years since I've had it. Wait a minute, two years. I've got it in 2016. So he, um, he's been really sweet with that. So, and even when I've had to get him to help me with it, he has been really gracious. So I appreciate that. Tracy said, I've watched your videos from the quilt shows and enjoy them. Do they have machines that you can try to see if you like them? Yes, they do. They have something set up that you can try. A lot of them are doing demonstrations or having you do make and take. So, yes, you can sew on them. So, Love says, I have two hours left at work. Keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> Donna, you're so sweet. She says, I could listen to you all night. You're great. I appreciate that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that it'll get worse as the time go on. I get, um, I forget things that are not like in my head or on my agenda. Then I have to recall what it, what that is. And so sometimes that's why I couldn't even remember horizontal and vertical locks. It's like, you know, the lock bars. <laughs> I wasn't even planning on talking about long war machine quilting tonight. And then she was saying, that's bad. Uh, Diane is saying, that's that bad business. They should have fixed the machine. She would have gone to them for extra feed, other accessories. And that's true. You know, she um, would have bought more stuff from them. And she hasn't been back in the store since. So... And I've even stopped going to them because of her. That used to be my machine shop. And so I stopped going to that shop. I actually use the machine shop where I purchase my gamel now. They also service my regular home sewing machine. So they have even lost some customers for that. And I don't refer anybody else. People ask me where to take their machines to, and I don't tell that company anymore. And I'm just trying to get through the comments fields, and then I roll one time, and the whole screen goes away. <laughs> and Eric is saying, hey, as long as the camera works. <laughs> yeah, I do like my camera. And Eric says, his guild decided not to do a show this year. My guild actually does a show every other year. Then that way we have like a year and a half to plan a quilt show, so we're not scrambling every year and then we also make a raffle quilt that we sell the raffle tickets for and we do that so we can have time to make the quilt as well and then we try to have everybody in the guild that wants to participate in the raffle quilt <laughs> diane says if it ain't broke don't fix it t it still works yes i actually love my little camera Teresa says, hi, T, just finished watching the Quilting Marine, and he had to hurry up so he could watch you live. <laughs> he talks about you all the time. Well, thank you, Teresa, for coming over. He is still here. Thank you, Quilting Marine, for the referral. I appreciate that. Bonita says, what's the best days to attend quilt show, during the week or on the weekend? And I think right now, uh-oh, I lost something. Okay, something happened on my screen. I clicked the little down arrow and it went bonkers. For me, 
the shows get more attendance on the weekend and that's because saturday people most people are off work you have some people that don't mind taking off one day of work so friday will be just a little less busy than saturday but on thursday if you go to a show during the thursday or wednesday of a show you're not going to have all the people who are taking off work for almost a week to go to a quilt show so I like to go to the shows on Thursday if I can. If they have a Wednesday, I probably would do a Wednesday too. So that's my suggestion. But I actually go to Paducah on Friday because I have I go with other people and that's when they can go. So I do go to Paducah on Friday. If you noticed in that video, it was very difficult for me to take the pictures because it's so many people in there that I just didn't have the room and I was trying not to put so many people in my YouTube video because a lot of people don't want to be photographed and <laughs> okay I'm still on my screen it's just I don't know why it's doing that Okay. And Sarah's saying that she love open, I guess, open-ended conversations. Thank you. You're welcome. It runs Friday through Sunday. I guess she's saying that the Houston show runs Friday through Sunday. I think the Houston show is open on Thursday, too, I thought. But, Nita, sometimes vendors do mark down, but most don't. So, Eric is helping out people in the comment section. I guess that question must have been asked, and I missed it. Um, Diane says Thursday and Sunday. It closes early. Houston is crowded all the days, Donna says, and Sunday is probably the least crowded. And then Dewana says, that's just the criminals that don't want to be pictured <laughs> laughing out loud. <laughs> I'm laughing, but, you know, sometimes you have people that may have been in some kind of domestic issues and don't want to be photographed as well. So I do understand that. I always try to think of it from a safety point of view because sometimes people have reasons why they don't want to be uh, in a camera and so it was a I felt like that happened a lot at IQF and it happened just a little bit at Paducah so once it happens I try to make sure that my camera is not facing people and this time I did get some comments in my uh, some comments on those videos saying that I was making making one person said I made her dizzy because I was spinning the camera and things like that and I was moving too fast and some other things she said. And I can understand her point of view, but also from my point of view, it's a lot of people in the room. I barely have room to walk. I'm bumping into people because I'm not watching where I'm walking and I'm constantly apologizing for bumping into people. And so I do the best that I can with those videos. I didn't take her comment as... Uh, nitpicking she was just stating what it did for her and I explained to her that I was okay with her having her opinion and that I was just doing the best that I can and I you know I apologize if it made you dizzy but I don't know what else to do in that situation when I feel like people don't want to be videotaped because I'm, I'm not one of those people that point my people, my camera at people that obviously do not want to be in a camera. I'm just not one of those people that will blatantly videotape you. So I, I, I try to do the best that I can. So we got some more comments here. These people do not want to go to bed tonight. And <laughs> Eric says, I'm 6'6", six, six, just hoover over most people. <laughs> or they get intimidated and they part way like Moses splitting the sea. <laughs> oh, they don't want their jobs to know that they they're there. They might have called off sick and regular people. Eric, I'm five three, so I'm on the low side. <laughs> That's pretty funny. You all have got great sense of humor. 
Yeah. But I think I am through the comment section. We have been talking now for one hour and 35 minutes. <laughs> so I think we are just going to go ahead and end here. And it says you can slow down the video if it bothers you. That's what Joan is giving uh, comments to people. And that's what I said too. Anytime you see a quilt that you like on my videos, you can always pause the screen. And I don't know if any of you all or you may not be aware but you have a print screen on your keyboard and you can take a picture of whatever's on your screen and then you can paste that into a word document into a photo editor or anything like that and you can have a photo of any quilt that you see so yeah it all works out <laughs> Jennifer says maybe just a quick disclaimer at the beginning of those cool shows if you're subject to motion sickness <laughs> I did make a video I mean a disclaimer at the beginning about how many people were there and I knew it wasn't going to be the best video but you know you got to go with what you have so I am so glad you all came tonight even though I didn't have a topic so I see you all are getting ready to sign off so Good night, everybody, and I will see you next week, 7 p.m., USA Central Standard Time. Bye-bye.